Safety in the surgical theater isn't just a lofty goal. It's an expectation and cannot be assumed to occur without extreme effort. One mistake, one medication error, or operation on the wrong surgical site is a rare event. But for that patient and that patient's family, that mistake is nothing short of a tragedy. It's also a personal tragedy for everyone involved. No one wants to cause harm to a patient. In our particular institution, we do about 20,000 surgeries a year. And so the key thing is that every patient gets the same attention to detail, the same experience every time. And the experience has to be safe. That means that every patient has an attention to detail by typically all six people that are in the room. The professionalism and high skill level in any operating room in the modern world is remarkable. Everybody likely demands more of themselves than anyone demands of them. Yet we are all human beings. We can and do make mistakes. And so often, as a surgery is about to begin, few of us in the operating room have gotten a chance to talk or even to get to know each other. That's why the surgical team at Virginia Commonwealth University Health System has introduced a simple but powerful tool for use in the operating room, the Safe Surgery Checklist. Six, date of birth is January 2nd, 1985? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. And this checklist puts everybody in the operating room on the same page. There are three distinct processes. A briefing or huddle when the patient comes into the room. Everyone must stop, take a time out, and ask themselves and each other, who is our patient? What's the surgery? What's the allergy status? What is the blood supply? Which part of our patient's anatomy is our focus? The briefing is like the safety check before leaving the terminal and airport safety. It is designed for activities that every patient should be exposed to in the OR, not so much specific to the surgical procedure, but to that patient. It may seem so simple, but the checklist may be your most important instrument in performing a successful surgery. What we're doing is we're taking into account normal human behavior. So the whole purpose of this is everybody in this room that are involved in taking care of that patient, they are all need to be vigilant and watch and not assume that somebody else is doing the job right. From the moment a patient is wheeled into the surgical theater, the checklist goes into effect. Julie, we're going to take this stretcher away that's on your right. Just be careful. Don't move. Keep that arm right on your chest for me. And I'm going to put a safety strap across your abdomen, OK? okay. Just like a seatbelt, that's all. I'm going to start putting some monitors on. Yeah. I'm going to put some arm boards on the bed as well yeah, for your on. arms. Patient is secure. Hold your arms there. Okay. okay. I have your arm here. We've got a couple more monitors to put on. Okay. Can you feel that blood pressure cuff squeeze up on your arm? Do you want sequentials on? Uh, yes, yeah, she'll okay. need sequential on okay. her non operative leg, please. Okay, and just to recap, everybody, just tell me your full name again Julie Stevens. And your birthday, Julie? January 2nd, 1985. Good. And which leg are we working on? The right leg. Okay. The show it's open reduction internal fixation of your right tibial plateau fracture. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. It's medical record numbers 1524136. Yes, that's what I have on my chart. January 2nd, 1985. The checklist calls for multiple instances of asking the patient their name and if they've given consent to the surgery. It is something we do every day with every patient and it's extremely important because patient safety. Um, repetition is important as well. We ask the patient over several times to, to reiterate what they're having done in their, their surgical site. And in the course of a the day, they might be asked eight, nine times to, just so that we're all on the same page. And that's the most important part. Okay, so how long do we think the procedure is gonna last? Uh, probably about two and a half or three hours. Okay, good. And estimated blood loss? Um, Possibly enough that she might need uh, transfusion, so she has a current sample, and there's two units of packed cells that we have in the blood gas lab. Mm -hmm. They're here. And we have implants in the room. We have the Cynthia's tibial plating system, Mark? Yes, we have it in a sterile. And what type of anesthesia are we using? General. General. Great. And she has no allergies. Do we have antibiotics? Has she received any yet? You want to give her some antibiotics? Uh, two grams of ANSEF now, please. Okay. Okay, great. We have recipe in the left leg. Um, 
Does she need a foot pump or anything? Just the SCD. Okay, great. And we're gonna use upper body bear hugger? Yep, keep her warm right here. All right, sounds good. We have double gloves for everybody. We have blunt needles and we're using a hands-free zone. And everybody's got their eyewear on, right? Everybody's their eyewear on. From the anesthesia perspective, I may not see Dr. Maxwell before, the, before she comes to the operating room. So I may not know if they're expecting to lose a lot of blood, if they're really wanting antibiotics given, if, you know, I may not have that chance to communicate with her before we meet in the operating room. So that checklist really goes through those things. I'm busy doing my thing, she's busy doing her thing. So doing that early on really addresses the needs of, do we need blood? Do we think we're gonna be here for a long time? Are we expecting to lose a lot of blood? What antibiotics do we wanna give? So it kind of gives us a chance to come together when, when we're really busy doing our own tasks. These pre-surgical checks compel everyone in the room to take that extra moment to check on whether they are truly ready and knowledgeable about the patient and the upcoming procedure. The VCU checklist also calls for having the names of everyone in the room available so a team approach becomes easier. From my perspective, especially when you start uh, as a younger resident, but you don't know anybody and you walk in the room and um, it's, it's definitely helpful to have people's names on the board so you don't just have to say, hey you, excuse me, you know, it's, which would be a little bit you know, rude and awkward. This, it, it gets the team approach, I think, a lot better because I can say, oh, you know, hi Elaine and I'm Abby and it goes from there a lot easier. Um, and I think it's probably easier for everyone else when they have a thousand different residents that we all look the same with our masks on also. It's really hard to identify, so we put our names on the board and then you can communicate easier. After the pre-procedure briefing is complete, the patient is anesthetized, and the patient has been prepped and draped, the surgeon calls a timeout. Everyone's focus is on this patient. We review the checklist one last time before the incision is made. Everyone must agree that they understand exactly what procedure is being done and that all preparations have been made. The antibiotics have been given, the equipment is available, and sterility has been confirmed. It's time for a timeout. Let's stop what we're doing. Elaine, go ahead. Kim, can you verify with me her name on her band? I've got her armband here. Go ahead. Okay, we have Julie Stevens. Yes. I have her medical record number is 1524136. Correct. Date of birth is January 2nd, 1985. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. And she's consented for an open reduction internal fixation of a right tibial plateau fracture. Yes. Her leg is marked for the right leg. The x rays show right, so okay. that's, that's good. Okay. okay. She has no known drug allergies. Has she received any antibiotics? Yes, yeah, she's got no known drug allergies. We gave her two grams of AMSEF. Okay, good. And uh, we have two units of PAT cells here. Do you want anything more? No, that should be plenty. Okay, an extended life sample. Yes, okay. and I've got an upper body bear hugger too. Fantastic. That's turned on. Okay. Okay, are there any um, risk, risks for DVTs or safety concerns that you have? Uh, yeah, afterwards, we'll give Lovenox, so we'll, we'll protect her from DVT afterwards. So okay, that's a good point. on the other leg. Yeah, yeah. the left leg has um, a CD on. Are there any safety, other safety concerns, Dr. Zolzer? Yeah, so I, all of us have uh, eye protection on. We all have double gloves. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I'm gonna, I'd like to use zero vicral blunt needles for the deep mm -hmm. fascial closure, so please have it available when yes, we get sir. to it. I'm gonna hand you the knife uh, back on the kidney basin. Please hand me the kidney basin. And of course, you can hand it to me directly. The implants are here in the room, the synthes to be able to plating yes. system, right? Yes. And we verified sterilization, yeah. proper sterilization of those implants. All right, sounds good. Do we all agree? Do yes. I disagree? Okay, let's go ahead. As the surgery commences, everybody in the room performs their tasks with a new level of comfort. They know each other's names. They all know the other's roles. And most importantly, they all know exactly the same information about this patient and this procedure. So in my standpoint, as I'm standing back, I'm kind of observing everything because I'm, I'm usually ready to go when a patient comes in the room. So when they come in the room, I... Uh, I'm standing back watching everything. I can actually see what's going on, see what might be not be caught. You know, it might be, it might be a couple things. I can say, hey, mm -hmm. we haven't done this yet. We haven't done that yet. Following surgery, a post-operative debriefing is conducted before the patient is discharged from the OR. The final elements of the checklist are reviewed. What did we do? How well did we do it? And what are the next steps for this patient? Okay, just to recap, what would you like to call today's? Procedure? We, we did an open reduction internal fixation of the right tibial plateau. Okay, and do we have any specimens, cultures? 
There's no specimen. Uh, we have no cultures and no specimens, so it's nothing to send to pathology. Okay, great. And all counts were correct today. Thank you. Okay. And do you have any postoperative plans that you'd like to discuss? Yeah, so we got to make sure, Abby, that the patient's non weight bearing in the right leg, uh, make sure the patient gets uh, is a little higher risk for uh, DVT, so make sure we get Lovenox this evening. Want to see the patient back in about five days. Uh, from an anesthesia standpoint, her blood pressure, the, there's some hint of maybe that she was hypertensive, but you didn't find, was the blood pressure okay the entire case? Yeah, she was stable in trial. Okay, she's going to go to PACU? Okay, and then to the floor? All right, I'll go ahead and call report. The things that, you know, one thing I want to say is uh, a lot of, you know, almost 95% of things went very well. One thing is I didn't have my special dressings that I'd like to have. So uh, you and I talked about that the next time we have those dressings available. Okay, so I think things went very well. Thank you, everyone. A recent exhaustive study by the New England Journal of Medicine following surgeries in the Netherlands found that these simple checklists had a significant effect on patient outcomes by reducing the rate of morbidities associated with surgical errors. Not only did the infection rates drop and complications drop, but things such as hematomas in the operating room and anastomotic leaks when they sew something together, the leakage dropped, suggesting that the key to checklists is to reduce chaos. And that, I think, is a number one thing. And the number two thing is obviously to have a predictable experience for the patient. Well, so you always have to be prepared for something to fall through the cracks, but I mean, knowing that um, everyone is kind of there and we're all looking out for the same thing and it's a kind of a team approach as opposed to just everyone on their own, it does make you feel, uh, you know, that yes, we're, there's much less chance of anything being missed or any danger coming to the patient or anything like that. With the goal of providing the safest surgical environment that we possibly can by reducing chaos, errors, and surgical complications, healthcare professionals in the operating room cannot assume that others are focused and paying close attention to details. The entire team has to be engaged to reduce errors. VCU is finding that the surgical checklist improves communication and teamwork, which ultimately will get us closer to our goal of improving patient outcomes. Thank you.